Alrighty, welcome back everyone. I am Blaze here. Today's video, I love this one. I love making this one. This is on some of the most iconic and best quests of the Velius expansion in EverQuest. Let's get to it. But before we do, I actually want to give a thank you to everybody who suggested ideas in the community post I put out. Thank you guys all so much for giving me a lot of ideas, a lot of advice for making this video. So in general, what you're going to want to know for Velius is it's a faction extravaganza. You have three main factions you're going to have to juggle. The Coldane Dwarves, the Kromzex or the Giants, and Kale Drackle, and then the Dragons in Sky Shrine. And you got to pick one. Really, it's a battle between are you going to be a good faction with the Giants or a good faction with the Dragons? And that will affect a lot of how you interact with this expansion. And as well, you have a really unique encounter in this expansion. It's called the Sleeper or Carafim. It's considered to be the most powerful NPC, the most powerful dragon in all of Norath. The combination of, I think it was Vox and Nagafin who bred and have this dragon that was considered heresy, part of the dragon rules. And uh, the only other thing you need to know about the Velius expansion is there's really two keys you're going to want to get. One for Sleeper's Tomb and one for Siren's Gato. But let's get to it. So in these slides, I'm actually going to put who gave me the suggestion for it. So thank you so much to Ruffner, Bobner. I like to add eye patch of plunder. I've never done this quest, but it seemed kind of a pain actually on these servers because it had a lot of competition. But it gives this really nice face item that gives you a 20% haste for 10 minutes and it involves getting these four lost maps from generally name mobs one with storm feather i think one drops off a lodazol and giving them to captain nalot in iceclad ocean i believe next one is the lodazol shell shield i like this one too this is one of my dad's favorite items it's a uh, back and also a secondary so you can use it as a shield that gives you enduring breath as a worn effect it's a really, really nice way to not have to worry about drowning or running out of breath when you're in, say, Kedgekeep or you're in the Grey whenever the Luckland expansion comes out. And all it is is you just defeat Lodazol and Iceclad. He'll always drop this section of a shell. And then you turn that in with 10,000 gold or 1,000 platinum to this Othmir and Iceclad, I believe. And then there you go. You got your shield. And it's a really nice one. Next quest, I've done this one, but I don't have any footage of it, unfortunately. I did this on P99, and it just involves killing tiger raptors, and these Holgreshes are the weirdest looking creatures, man. They are this flying monkey thing. They used to drop these Holgresh elder beads prior to a patch that would let anybody do Eye of Zom. It was a really favorite monk item, but this is a really nice wrist that's meant for plate and chain users and it has a clickable effect that lets you do a little tiny nuke it has really small range it's mostly useless but it's a pretty nice stat item in between when you don't have your raid gear yet i've never heard of this quest but this sword looks amazing it looks like the sword you get from ssra or i call it temple of sriracha it's called Nature's Defender, and it's getting three different drops from Awakening Lands, getting one drop from the Plane of Hate, a mini boss, and it gives this really cool looking Pally sword that has a 100 damage hit and stun proc, and it's only usable though by half elves and high elves of the Tunair deity. So this must be the Plane of Growth quest line. The next one is Lucis Task. So this one is a faction dependent task. You need to be amiable with the dragons or the Sky Shrine faction. And it's simple in theory, but highly, highly competitive. On P99, they actually had a rule set as to how this is done. On live, it's more of a free for all, but fortunately, with pick zones, you're not as cramped as on P99. It's basically just turning in this one item you get from Sky Shrine to this NPC called Scout Carissa. And then you'll get a giant to spawn. You take out the giant, loot some item off of him, turn it into Carissa, and that's it. 
The only thing is Scout Carissa only spawns once every 10 hours. She has a respawn timer of 10 hours, so only one person can do this at a time. But it gives a really, really good bracer. Pretty much the best bracer you're going to get outside of the very end tier Temple V-Shan quest. It's also got a nice robe and a really, really nice item for clerics, druids, and shamans with 15 wisdom on it. It's insane. For range and secondary. Next is Aid the Darbrood. This is actually pretty simple too. So you go to Dragon's Necropolis, get a raid, and take out this evil dragon called Zlandikar. He's actually, I think, a necromancer dragon that got in prison there for eating the flesh of other dragons. And then you give that to Harladar out in Western Waste, just a random roaming dragon, and you'll get this really nice back and chest slot item that actually has 34% haste on it. It's pretty solid. This is one of the coolest events in Velius. It's called the Ring Vor. Cool to see, but not really fun to participate in because it takes forever. It was nice to see it the first time in my guild, but after that, people hated doing it. And this is for the Ring of Dane Frost Reaver, the fourth. It gives a really nice permanent hit point regen buff, attack bonus, and a bit of a damage shield. It's a series of 10 quests, and the last major part being this huge war right outside of Thurgoden where the giants are trying to invade, and you and your buddies try to stop it. And what's cool about this is there's actually consequences. If you don't defeat the Ring War, Thurgoden gets wiped out. All the dwarves are gone. You can't use the zone pretty much. It's worthless. So this quest actually matters. Uh, failure will impact real world Nora. I think the way that the developers made the Velix expansion was one of the most interesting things done in EverQuest history in terms of actual world events, like the sleeper being awakened and this as well. Next is the Coldane Prayer Shawl. This is a heavy on trade skilling quest. This is actually a really great one for enchanters to do but it gives a shoulder item that gives one extra mana regen. It's a series of seven quests in Velius, and there's a eighth quest that gets added on later, I think around Planes of Power for an upgrade from the space item. But it's very trade skilling heavy. It mostly involves getting ingredients from a bunch of different zones, like getting these silk swatches from Velcators that drop off the spiders. Next quest is Raugan's Promise. It's a Sky Shrine quest, so you're going to need Amiable, I think, or Ally Faction in Sky Shrine. And you're looting three items, two from Kale and one from Dragon Necropolis. Turn it into Raugan, and then you get this really nice head slot item. That's good intermediary before you get some of the better stuff for the head slot. This is a quest I'm surprised nobody talked about. It's a really weird one in EverQuest history when you get these specific quest that gets stopped completely for one reason or another. So this quest isn't necessarily removed, but one of the ground drops, one of the ground spawns needed to complete it doesn't drop anymore, at least on P99. I never even checked on live if you can do this, but it gives a really, really weird looking equipable weapon that I don't even know how to describe it. I guess it's archery weapon that has a knockback effect you can proc. It's really weird. It's more of like a fashion piece or more like a novelty piece you would get. Like, I think, Rubicite armor off a of box or something. Next one is a quest I've done also on P99. It's called Velium Retrieval. It's actually very, very simple. It just costs money. You basically have to throw 50 platinum down every time it fails. But it, all it is is getting an item from Sky Shrine, running to Thurgonin, turning the item in in 50 plat in Thurgonin, and then running back to Sky Shrine. And you'll have a random chance to either get a, one of these throwing hammers, or you'll get a bracer that can give you unlimited summoning throwing hammers, which is really, really nice, say if you're a monk, and you need some way to get unlimited throwing weapons. This is really, really nice. I've never heard about this quest, so thank you so much, Excalibur. Garrus Weapons to Trade. This one is actually best for monks, beast lords, paladins, and SKs. 
and it involves turning in weapons that drop in Sleeper's Tomb, and you can give it to this trader that's just right outside the main entrance, and it'll give a upgrade, an upgraded version of the same weapon. I think it has a better damage to lay ratio than the base ones that you get from Sleeper's Tomb, so you might want to do this one. These next two quests are going to be critical if you want to access most of the stuff in the Velis expansion. First one is the Cobalt Scar Key. You can do this the legitimate way, or you can do this the illegitimate way. The legitimate way costs a bit of money. The illegitimate way is way quicker. I'm just going to talk about the wrong way, or the quick way to do it. You just find this NPC called Ziglark Whisperwing in Sky Shrine and take him out. I think he's like a paladin, a level 30 something paladin. You're going to take a Sky Shrine faction hit whatever you can easily make it up you get this shrine key and then it lets you get access to cobalt scar and the next one the sleeper's tomb key is also super simple in comparison to later key all this one is is just getting a talisman that usually drops some mobs in western waste turning it into jaladar shade and dragon necropolis you're gonna need a lock picker to be able to get you in there though and there you go you got the sleeper's tomb key you can get to the end tier zone of velius and the last thing to keep in mind about the Velius expansion, so I mentioned faction. Faction's important. You have a bunch of different armor quests, depending on what faction you do, but they're all generally the same. So Thurgadin has quested armor you can do, sort of lower tier, that grouping people can get. Kale Drackle has end tier quested armor. Sky Shrine, that's typically what I've always gone with. Temple Vishan has really, really end tier quest stuff but it's probably the most pain to do. You have crafted sets of armor, Plane of Growth has its own stuff, and even Plane of Mischief too. Every single one of these zones has their own specific quest lines and armor they can do. But two of the biggest pieces of armor that people really seek out in the Velis expansion is the Cleric Legs and the Monk Wrist. So the Cleric Legs this involves taking out some mobs in Temple of Vishan and then turning it in to your appropriate quest giver. But the Cleric Laves give a unlimited charge group heal that's mana free. This item is money for clerics. This is actually one of the must have items if you're playing cleric. It makes AoEs on raids so much more viable, so much more easier to handle. And the Monk Wrist here Similar to the Bracer of Hammerfall I talked about, this Monk Wrist actually gives you unlimited shurikens, so you can have unlimited throwing items. And I think these shurikens have a lot longer range than those throwing hammers, so this is beautiful. You definitely want to get this item if you're a monk. But in the end, thank you guys all so much for watching. Thank you to everybody subscribed, not subscribed, watches the videos, like, doesn't matter. Thank you guys all so much for the support of the channel. See you in the next one.